Hugs, a mistake that, that, Trudeau, that the NDP has now admitted described has, is exactly what the BC U, uh, Nurses Union has publicly reported. They have reported that members of their union were unable to breastfeed their kids because they had breathed in crack or meth smoke at work and were worried about the poison that might then have contaminated their breast milk. This is the al almost hallucinogenic reality that nine years of Trudeau and the NDP have caused. After nine years of Trudeau, everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. You make it. Trudeau takes it. Housing costs have more than doubled. Here in Vancouver, if you take the average paycheck and try to pay the mortgage on the average house, it eats up more than 100% of your pre-tax income. So even if the average Vancouverite were to stop paying taxes, stop eating, stop taking a vacation, stop buying clothes, stop driving, stop doing anything else, they still wouldn't have enough out of their paycheck to make a mortgage payment every single month. Vancouver is now the third most overpriced housing market in the world and Toronto has been declared the worst housing bubble on planet Earth after nine years of Trudeau. After nine years of Trudeau, we have the worst economic growth in the G7. Our per capita GDP has been falling now for six consecutive quarters. Canadians are earning $4,200 less than they, were, than they were on track to earn before Trudeau. Per person, that's 17000 per family. I say all of this because obviously, let's not be naive about it, the immense financial strain that people are under is contributing to the drug crisis that has exploded over the last nine years. But we cannot admit, uh, ignore the fact that Trudeau and the NDP have imposed radical policies that made everything worse. They have decriminalized hard drugs, a mistake that, that, Trudeau, that the NDP has now admitted has ha contributed to the problem. They allowed crack to be smoked in parks next to kids. They allowed meth to be smoked on public transit next to seniors late at night when those our elderly were all alone. And of course, they allowed hard drug use and weapons in our hospitals. They continue to give out tax-funded opioids provided by the same companies that caused the crisis in the first place who continue to profit off the misery and the results are in. There is an increase of 380% in drug overdose deaths under these NDP liberal po policies. This radical ideological approach is killing our people. Now, it will be a while before we hold the carbon tax election, at which time common sense conservatives can choose a different path to bring home safety. In the meantime, we are determined to protect our hospitals from this liberal NDP insanity. And that is why I'm here today. Since Trudeau formed government, over 4,200 Canadians have died of overdoses, a 400% increase in Nanaimo alone. The results have been catastrophic. The BC Nurses Union has reported that meth has been smoked in a unit just hours before the birth of a newborn baby in northern BC. The public health agency put out a memo telling hospital staff to allow patients to bring, to bring knives and other weapons into hospitals. This is the result of the wacko decriminalization Trudeau and the NDP brought in. Two years ago, the Liberal government granted the BC NDP request to allow hard drugs across the, provinces, in the province, including in public places. This reckless and radical and wacko policy has killed 2,500 British Columbians in one year alone. Meanwhile, community spaces like soccer fields uh, and hospitals and city squares are devastated by crime. The Abbotsford Soccer Association had to comb through the field before the games to make sure there were no dirty needles, crack pipes, or other drug fair paraphernalia. British Columbians are seeing their pets have drug overdoses from sniffing dangerous substances that have been left in formerly idyllic and peaceful parks. 
Not only that, but now Trudeau is considering a request from Toronto to replicate his radical experiment with decriminalization. Enough is enough. Common sense Conservatives will not allow this devastation and this experiment to play out in other Canadian communities. Communities. Canadians deserve a government that will keep hard drugs out of hospitals and will protect staff and patients. We will pass the Safe Hospitals Act. It will create an aggravating factor for, for sentencing anyone who brings an illegal and un unauthorized weapon into a hospital. Two, it will take away the discretion from the Federal Health Minister under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act to decriminalize illicit drugs like fentanyl and meth, crack and heroin in hospitals. This means that if Trudeau grants Toronto or Montreal's request to decriminalize hard drugs, our hospitals will at least our hospitals will be protected. We will also push for the immediate passage of common sense conservative MP Todd Doherty's Bill C321 which will create an aggravating factor for assaults committed against healthcare workers and first responders. In other words, if you attack a nurse, a paramedic, or a doctor, you will go for it to jail for longer. To be clear, this common sense bill, the Safe Co Hospitals Act, will not apply to any drugs pres prescribed by medical professionals like doctors and nurses. The Safe Hospitals Act will stop some of the insanity that Trudeau and the NDP have unleashed in our communities. Not only that, we will give Canadians a choice in the next election between a costly coalition of Trudeau and the NDP that tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs and unleash crime, chaos, drugs and disorder in your community. Or common sense conservatives who will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. Now, let's bring it home. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. We'll now have time for questions from the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Pauly, of uh, Chuck Ching with the Canadian Press. Um, do you have any concerns that the province may push back regarding this being viewed as a curb on their jurisdiction in hospital settings? And how do you plan to react to that if there is pushback from the provinces? Thank you. They might. The NDP and Trudeau are equally radical on these questions, but I'd leave it up to British Columbians. Do British Columbians believe that someone should be allowed to smoke crack, meth, uh, and bring machetes into hospitals right next to patients who are trying to recover from cancer or a heart attack? Uh, or do they believe in my common sense approach that would ban the drugs, stop giving out tax-funded opioids, and instead invest in treatment and recovery to bring our loved ones home drug-free. 